I want to welcome you to the Prodigal Son Podcast. You know, we do this podcast six days a week, and we do this for a reason. We do this so people can see and understand and, and get a grasp on just how much God loves them, just how much He cares for them, just how much He's for them. And and I want to thank you for tuning in. Hey, listen, I want to ask a favor. I want you to uh, share these podcasts on your social media. You know, people people have no idea that that God is a good God, that He's He's for them, not against them. There's millions upon multitude, millions of people that walk the face of this earth today that don't know that. They do do not know that. And the Word says, the Bible says that the the goodness of God that is what leads men to repentance. And and I want to get the word out about this. I want people to see and understand that 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 they can count on Him. He's not a tyrant. You know, I lived for years thinking God was a tyrant. I really did. I th- I thought he was a, a some bipolar, just crazy old man that sat on his throne with a hammer in one hand, a lightning bolt in the other, just waiting for me to mess up. But that ain't God. That's religion. And and it's 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 sad to say, but it's some of his religious people. Now they're out they're out to jump you every every chance they get. But but that's not God. And this podcast is done every week for that reason, for, for to let people know and understand and realize that God is for them. Oh, I thank God that He's for me. He was for me when I was out in the world, backslid, away from Him, out of His will, because I didn't know what I know today. And and we want to spread this word, spread this good news throughout the world that we live in for people to see and understand just how much God is for them. People don't realize that. And, and it's a shame. It really is that, that people have an outlook that, uh, that, you know, God is just a, just unpleasable. That's not God. That's not God. But I, like I said, I want to ask you to share these, these, uh, podcasts on your social media. Share them everywhere you go. I mean, people are being set free all over the world because people like you share these podcasts. They're free. Don't cost anyone anything. All they have to do is 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 tune in and download them. There there's there's hundreds of them now. We're working almost. We're getting close to a thousand podcasts, and it thrills me to be able to say everything that on this podcast is free. Oh, I thank God for that. And you know why we can do that? Because we have faithful partners that partner with this ministry to help us do just that, to give these God's Word away free of charge, to give these podcasts away to anyone that will listen. I want to openly thank all the partners of the Prodigal Son Podcast. Thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today, a hundredfold return on everything that you sow into God's kingdom through this ministry, through this podcast, helping people see and understand that God's a good God. Glory to God. Share these podcasts on your social media. My prayers for you come out of Paul's prayers for the Ephesians. You know, Paul wanted the Ephesians to, to grasp the love that, that God had for them. And, and that is my earnest prayer for the world that we live in today, that they would see and understand that, that God is for them, that he is for them. He's not out to get them, but he's out to help them. And, and, and that, is, that is what I want to see the world find out. And that is that he loves them, that he, that he cherishes them, and he wants more than anything to be part of their life. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. 
This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus forever into Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that he has opened my eyes and my earnest prayer for you and everyone else that walks the face of this earth that, that, that he opens yours, that you allow him to open your eyes. And you say, how is that? How can I allow him? By getting in his word and, and believing his word for yourself. Glory to God. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me. Touch my heart. Touch my mind. Touch my mouth. Help me be the light, the vessel that you can shine through. Lord, I thank you for all you're doing in this podcast, all that you're going to do and all that you have done in each and every person's lives that that are being set free, listening to your word, the truth in your word. Lord, I thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. You know, we've been in Luke 8 yesterday and I think the day before. And and I want to continue in Luke 8. Uh, this is something the Lord gave me an illustration yesterday, and I want to continue in that because it's, oh, it's, it, it's so good, so good to come to realize that you can take a just a, a regular circumstance that you're dealing with and, and apply it to God's Word. And this one is just, I mean, it's just, it, it just stands to reason. If 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 you will do what what I've been doing in this garden, I mean, in your life, and and apply God's word to your life the way I've applied this mulch to this garden, God's word will change you. Oh, it'll change you. Listen to this: the uh, Luke eight and the sixth verse. And this is in the New Living Translation. It says, Other seed fell among rocks. Now remember, this ground up here is rocky. Rocky. And it says, uh, And the seed fell among rocks. It began to grow, but the plant soon wilted and died for lack of moisture. Now I want to go on down and read what Jesus said uh, about this situation and it's in the 13th verse and it says the seed the seeds on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and receive it with joy but since they don't have deep roots in other words they're not grounded and and rooted deeply into god's word they believe for a while then they fall away for for when they face temptations now, does that, can, can you relate to that? Boy, I can. I can. I can get seed to grow out here in this garden without this mulch. But like, just like, just like what, they're, what these verses are talking about, it will spring up, 
and it'll die because the there ain't nothing there to to hold moisture. There ain't no substance there. There's no no soil there, no soil to speak of. There's soil there, but it's this is just a rocky hill. Well, when I put when I blanket, when I blanket this garden with this mulch, what does that mulch do? It holds moisture. It holds nutrition. It holds what the plants need to live. That when you blanket your heart with God's word to nourish it, to nourish it, that's when you see things change. You know, when when I put this mulch in, this has been years since I've done this, years, literally years. And uh, when I put this mulch on this garden and let it let it lay, over time, it has held moisture and softened up that hard clay. Remember what we were talking about yesterday? Softened up that hard ground. Now I can plant in it. I can take a mattock and just scratch out a row and plant my seed, cover them up, and they grow. I've got three rows up there right now. All this rain and warm weather, I guarantee you that they've sprouted. The plants have started growing. I know they have. But... What I want you to see and understand is that this same method that I'm talking about in a carnal, you know, just a carnal situation will work in your life. When you put God's word, when you apply God's word over your life, blanket your heart with God's word to nourish it, you'll grow stronger than you've ever been before. I didn't understand that. I'd always been taught, you know, you need to get in church. You need to go church somewhere. Don't matter where you go. Just you just need to be in church. No, <laughs> it does matter. It matters greatly where you go. It matters greatly of what you hear and what you what you receive into your heart. Because I, I'm good. There's a lot of good intentioned people in this world that sow doubt, fear, and unbelief on a daily basis. To anybody that'll listen, and and that is not God's will. God's will is that you take God's word and you you believe it and stand on it, regardless of what you see, regardless of the situations. And and tomorrow I'm not going to get into it today, but um, I'm on. Uh, I'll I'll mention it, and that is seeds uh, trying to grow amongst thorns. Amongst thorns now, you listen to me. We we don't you don't need to be you don't need to be trying to uh, grow spiritually in a thorny environment. But that's tomorrow. I'm not going to get into that today. What I want you to understand is that God's word will hold on to what you need. It will produce what you need to live, to be nourished spiritually, to be strengthened spiritually. And, and when, when you do that, when you, when, when you allow God's Word to blanket your heart and your life, it will feed you and strengthen you. I did, I, I, for years I lived, I lived, I staggered around in darkness, in the dark, trying to figure out what God's will for me was when his will was exactly what I was what I was carrying to church every Sunday literally his will is his word and if you'll get in his word and find out what his word says you'll find out what his will is for your life and there is there are uh, senior citizens people in their 70s and 80s and 90s that that have desired to have God's will done in their life their entire their entire uh, life they as long as they can remember they've always wanted God's will to be done but they they have never seen it done in their life why because they've never applied God's word to their life they read God's word, but they don't believe God's word. They read God's word and say, yo, yeah, that's true. But when that situation comes that they can apply God's word to that situation, they don't. They forget all about it. They're easily distracted by anything that Satan throws at them. That's not blanketing their, your life with God's word. When you blanket God's word all over your heart, when something comes against you, guess what? Guess what? It hits that word. 
And that's a barrier between your heart and the world that you live in. And, 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 uh, what, what you're, what, the, what, just like this, uh, verse was talking about that, you know, when seed, uh, come up in rocky soil and it doesn't have any moisture, it withers and dies. But when you, when you put God's word over your heart, it'll not only soften that rock hard, uh, heart and soften it up, but it'll hold moisture and, 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 and hold the, the water of the word. To feed your heart, to feed your heart, and all that word. See all that mulch that I put over that garden. When it rains, it 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 it, it starts that uh that the uh, decomposing process of that mulch, and that water soaks through that mulch and takes the nutrients out of that mulch and feeds the ground under it. I mean, it it works perfectly. Yeah, I ain't got time to do it, but you ought to you ought to look up a uh, back to Eden Garden. I, I spoke to this man. I called him. He lives in Washington State. And uh, he told me, he said, the best soil that you'll ever find is deep in the woods where it, where it's been covered up for, for the last 50 years. It's been just constantly the leaves fall and the leaves fall and the leaves fall and, and they just rot. And you think about it. If you ever done any deer hunting, you go out and scratch around a tree, get the, the noisy leaves out around it. They ain't nothing there but black, just just fertile soil. And and that's what that's what I'm talking about. When you blanket your heart with God's word, you can you can become strong and healthy and fertile. And you say, How's that how, how what do you mean fertile? You can be fertile and produce what God's need God needs in your life to help someone else. What when you see a situation, it, it, God's word will will just bubble up in you, and you know what to say to help someone in a in a bad situation. Oh, it thrills me to be able to to know what I need to do on a daily basis when 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 uh, uh, a situation arises, and you can too. How by blanketing your heart with God's word. To nourish it, to 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 be a barrier, to be a barrier against the wiles of the devil. God's word will lead you, and it'll guide you, and it'll strengthen you. It'll give you it'll give you far more than you need to overcome a situation. But you got to put it there. Oh, you got to live in it, under it, around it, meditate on it on a daily basis. Now I'm gonna ask you something. You may be in a situation right now that you need you need a miracle desperate. Are you putting God's word in your heart on a daily basis? I dare to say if 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 you'll take a 30 day period and apply God's word to your situation, to God to your life, your life will change in 30 days. I, I promise you it will. But if you've never been born again, I want to ask you today, is today the day that you're going to decide to give your heart and life to Jesus Christ? He wants to be part of your life. He wants to be part of of, of everything that you're doing. But you have to let him in. You know, it's funny that the religious world says, you know, we're free moral agents. And we have to, you know, we have to uh, allow God to save us. Well, we have to allow God to heal us and, and provide for us and, and, and the, in, the same, in the same aspect because we're free moral agents. It's our decision of what we're going to do or not do with his word and with him. But if you've never been born again, Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. It says, thou shalt be saved. It says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, if if you've never been born again, that's the recipe to be born again, to be saved. Be born again today. Allow Jesus Christ to become Lord of your life and help you and guide you and direct you in everything you do. Because I promise you, I promise you without a shadow of a doubt that when you do that, it'll change your life. It'll change your life. And then blanket your heart with his word so he can nourish it and soften it. 
and and you may have one of the hardest hearts in the world. I know I lived with a hard heart for years and years, but when I started applying God's word to my life, to my heart, and 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 allowing God's word to nourish me and shield me from the world that I live in, my heart softened. Oh, and I thank God for what he has shown me and and given me through the years in his word. Be born again today. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and he'll change your life like you've never seen it changed before. Glory to God. Hey, if you're listening to this podcast, go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what God is doing in your life. I want to hear what you need him to do in your life. You know, we, we live in a, in a place that, in a, a, a time in history, that, that there is a dire need for God, God and His Word in people's lives. And you can grasp that need, or you can, you can supply that need through this podcast, through this truth in God's Word. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the dash prodigal son.com. If you got a prayer request, send it to me. Email it to me. I want to interact with you and help you to overcome the 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 garbage that this world throws at throw, throws at every one of us on a daily basis. And how am I going to help you do that? I'm going to give you scriptures that you and I both can stand on and agree on that your prayer request is going to be but going to be answered and taken care of according to the truth in God's word. Glory to God. I, I thank God, I thank God that we can stand on his word. Hey, if you're a partner of this ministry, I want to thank you. Partners, thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has co- commissioned us to do, what he has called us to do, and, and what he has sent us out to do, and that is to give his word away free of charge to anybody that will listen. Oh, I thank God for what the, these partners are doing to help us do that. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today, a hundredfold return on everything that you sow into God's kingdom. Glory to God. If you're not a partner of this ministry, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do because he may be calling you to, to support this ministry. He may be calling you to Help us do what we're doing. But he may be calling you to, to help the help someone down the street from you. He may be calling you to help another ministry that's giving God's word away. I'm just telling you, pray about it. Pray about what God would have you to do. Let him guide you and direct you. Let him lead you. How's he going to lead you? Through his word. Glory to God. Make Jesus Christ, make Jesus Christ the, the Lord of your life and let him lead you. Oh, I thank God. I thank God that I allowed him to do that years ago. Thank you, partners. Thank you for all that you do. Like I said, uh, if if you're not a partner, pray about it. Let God lead you. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.